Okay, greetings one and all, and welcome to day number one. Yes, day number one. This is week 16, spring 2024. Yes, day number one, week 16, spring 2024 of our journey together. And it's definitely a delight to have each and every one of you here for this evening's class. Um, so let's head up so we can get things started. So let's head up. Today is, um, today is, it has to be Monday, Monday the 22nd of April, 2024. The subject is of course, uh, mathematics. And the topic is constructing, we could say, um, geometrical. Yeah, let's just, yeah, let's go geometrical constructions. Part one. All right. Um, let me know if you inside the chat and if you have a geometry set. So if you have a geometry set, please put I inside the, the chat for me. Again, if you have a geometry set on you right now, please put I inside the chat. Okay, again, if you have a geometry set on you now, please put I inside the chat. Um, who's Albury? Who's Albury? I'm trying to figure out who's Albury. Um, Albury, who's Albury? I don't know who this Albury person is. Again, if you inside the if you inside the the chat and you have um a geometry set, please put I inside the chat if you have a geometry set. Let me know if you have a geometry set with you now. Um we're gonna be looking at geometrical constructions today. So for geometrical constructions, obviously we're gonna be looking at utilizing the geometry, the geometry set. And so you're gonna need that for today's class and for this week. All right. So we're going to begin with um, how to construct a or the steps, right? The steps for constructing, the steps for construction, con the steps for constructing um, a 60 degree angle. All right, so I only see five persons. Tegan, Chai, Sabria, Samantha, Evanese. The rest of you do not have a geometry set? No, sir. No? No, Dari said she don't have a geometry set. Um, Albury. Who is Albury? Who is the Albury? Albury person. Who are you? Is that me, Mr. T? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> I'm, I, I thought I was trying to figure. Out. Okay, I know you since now. <laughs> oh, well. All right. Um. Okay, so we're gonna write down the steps for find for um. We're gonna write down the steps for um constructing a sixty degree angle. And we're gonna be doing sixty degree, and we might have a chance to do ninety degree to, um today as well, right? So the first thing that you need to do in constructing a for those of you who do not have a geometry set, then you just have to draw it using like a ruler, all right? Um, put I inside the chat if you have a ruler or straight edge. If you have a ruler or straight edge, you still could do it. Let me know if you have a ruler or straight edge. Put I inside the chat if you have like a ruler or so. so. Straight edge. Where's Naya? Wow, Naya. Yes, sir. Wow, are you still on planet Earth? <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while, that's correct. It's been a while. Um, Did you win? I think you want me to use it like in a competition or something like that. 
I am in a competition. It's still going on. Okay. And so, yeah. Does it look promising? <laughs> I, I don't even know. Because I, I don't know who I'm going up against. But I'll oh. have to see. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's like something of a JA, right? Yes, so. Um, you left your book at, in, in my glass, the, the, um, your math book. The big BGCSE book? Uh-huh. Um, yes, I'm trying, so. what year did we stop at when you, when you were here? I think it was 2016. Um, I mean the, um, the recordings. Did you, did you, did you do the 2023 one? I think you did 2020, 2023 one. You know what? Let me just give you the most recent one because you probably haven't done that one. So I'm going to send you 2021 for you to watch and take notes on now. You don't have your, your book, so you have to just take the notes manually. Yes, sir. I think I'm just going to send the same number. I think it's the same number. Yes, sir, it is. Okay. All right. Um. Okay, so steps for constructing a 60 degree angle. If you do not have a, if you do not have a, a, a all of the geom the stuff for the geometry set, you can just um, use a ruler and a pencil. That would be, that would be enough. But if you do not have a geometry set, you need to buy, you need to purchase a geometry set, ask your parents, or if you have the money to purchase a geometry set, because you're going to need that for your exam, all right? Um, okay, so the first step in constructing a um, 60 degree angle is that you wanna mark the vertex. So we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna construct a a angle, a 60 degree angle LMN. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark mark the vertex of your angle anywhere on the paper. So, so in, in our case, um, we're gonna call it N. So let us name this point as M, right? So we're gonna call this M. Okay. So you're gonna first start off by um, marking the vertex of your angle. In our case, we're going to call it M, right? That's the first step. And let me just put an image here. So I'm going to put on the side of it. I'm going to put the image. You don't, you don't need this whole heading in. So let's put this. So the first step is marking the vertex of the angle. So I'm going to put this right down. Okay. All right, good. So that's the first that's the first one. So we want to mark the vertex um M on our on our um paper. Let me give this a so that's the first step, right? All right, so once you ready mark M on the that's the first step, right? So you uh, anywhere on your paper, you put M, that's going to be your vertex. The second thing that you want to do is you want to draw a ray. Okay. Now, a ray is just basically a line with an arrow, right? That has an endpoint. So it's going to be, so we're going to say draw a ray, M, N, right? Extending extending in any direction and of any length. Now this ray is going to be one of the arms of your angle. So this will be one of the arms of our angle. So the first thing that we do is we draw a point, call this point M, right? 
The second thing that we do is that we, ex we, we extend, we, we draw a line from this point and we extend it, okay? And then we're gonna call that other point, we're gonna call that N, right? So now we have M, N, okay? So this is the first one. Let me put this on here as well. It's going to be the second one. Okay, so the first thing that we do, as you can see from the first picture, we put the point, right? Then the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw a line extending. Um, we're going to call that um, M, N. Right, so we're gonna draw a ray. Okay, I don't know if I need these huge borders. I'm just gonna do a smaller border just to keep space. Okay. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is, uh, so the first thing we do is we draw, we put a point, right? The second thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take that point and we're gonna draw a line to extend to form a ray, right? That will be the first side of the angle, okay? Um, can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Can y'all Yes, yes sir. Okay. I don't know why Dia says she can't have it. Um, where is Summer? Summer, what happened yesterday? Are you supposed to come to class? I didn't see you. I had practice yesterday. Okay. Okay. You in sports? I didn't know you in sports. No, so it was for a church event. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh, I wanna what? No line? Okay, no line. I guess we do this and then we do no Good line. afternoon, Mr. Ruti. Good Sorry. afternoon. Is this the first slide, sir? This is the first slide. Thank you, sir. If you have a geometry set, it'll be important for this class. You're learning how to construct a 60 degree angle. So the first thing that we do is we tr we put the point. We put the point M, that's gonna be the first thing. Then the second that we're gonna do, the second thing that we're gonna do is we're going to, from point M, we're gonna draw an arrow extending from point M, and that's gonna give, that's gonna be our ray, okay? So you have to use a ruler to draw this, obviously you have to use a ruler to draw this, um, this ray, okay? Now the second thing that we're gonna, the third thing rather, is that we're gonna, now we're gonna use the compass. So we're going to um, place the tip of the compass. I need you to draw what's on the right hand side. I need you to draw that. If you have if you have the actual, you know, in instruments to do it, then draw it. If you do not, then you just have to use a ruler and a pencil. So place the tip of the compass on the point M, right? And set its width to any measure less than the length of the ray. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get, so I'm gonna, make this 
um, let's uh, highlight these. The first thing that we do is we mark. The second thing we draw. Third thing we place. So what we want to do is we want to place the tip of the compass on point M, right? And then set its width to any measure less than the length of the ray, okay? So let's do that. So I'm gonna show you the picture of that. So if you look carefully, this is this is what we're doing, right? So let me um, enlarge this. So we have this compass. We're gonna put the compass on the tip of point M, and then we're gonna extend our compass, right? And we're gonna set its width. Once it's less than, you don't want it to be over the point M. You want it to be less than the point M. So it could be anywhere. You could put it at half, or you could put a little more than half. That'll be that's appropriate. And so you put it just like this. All right. So you're gonna draw this as well. So let me make this smaller so this thing could fit. All right. So Okay, so let's go ahead and read the read the um, instructions. The first thing that we want to do is we want to mark the vertex of your angle anywhere on the paper. Let us name it M. So we're gonna put the point M right here. So that's gonna be our first point, point M. And then we want to draw a ray extending in any direction and of any length. This will be one of the arms. So this is the ray that we draw, the ray MN, okay? Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna place the tip of the compass on the point M. So you're gonna take your compass, put it at the point M, and you're gonna extend the width, and you're gonna set its width to any measure less than the length of the ray. So you're gonna extend this to anything, le anything less than MN, right? Once it's less than that, okay? All right. So, China, can you read the steps for me, please? For constructing a 60 degree angle. Yes, yeah, so number one, mark the vertex of your angle anywhere on the paper. Let us name this point as M. Number two, draw a ray MN extending in any direction of M. This will be one of the arms of our angle. Number three, Place the tip of the compass on on the point M and set its width to width to any measure less than the length of the ray. Very good. Very good. Um, Reagan, I need you to read the steps for me. The steps for constructing a sixty degree angle. Um, after you did it, can I finish right there, sir? Yes, we can. Step one: mark the vertex of your angle anywhere on the paper. Let us name this point as M. Number two, draw a ray MN extending in any direction of, of any length. This will be one of the arms of, your, of our angle. Number three, place the tip of the compass on the point M and set its width to any measure less than the length of the ray. Very good, very good. Okay, um, for those of you who are finished with um, this particular slide, take a picture of it and send it to me via WhatsApp. I need to see the drawings as well. So I need to see how y'all are doing the drawings. So again, if you are finished with this slide, take a picture of it and send it to me um, via WhatsApp, okay? Again, once you finish with this, take a picture of it and send it to me, yes. 
Maybe it's good to get my real up this. Yes, you can. Um, again, once you finish with this, take a picture of it and send it to me via WhatsApp. Um, so far, I see Dia Gibson. She has sent her work so far. Very good. Um, so far, Dia. Good information. The rest of you, I need to, I need to see your work. I need to see your work. Um, Ricardo. Ricardo. Okay. Okay. And <clears throat> have any okay. All right. Dari, are you there? Where's Dari? Um, I don't know if Dari. I don't know if Dari can. Um, Kingston, where's Kingston? Yes, sir. Um, I need you to read the three steps for me. Yes, sir. First one says, mark the vertex of your angle anywhere on the paper. Let us name this point as M. Mm -hmm. Step two, draw a ray MN extending in any direction and any length. This will be one of the arms of our angle. Step three, place the tip of the compass on the point M and set its width to any measure, any measure less than the length of the ray. Very good. Thank you for reading that. Again, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. I need to see your work so far. Um, for those of you who are finished, I need to see your work. Please take a picture of it and send it to me uh, via WhatsApp. And where's Myla? Myla, are you there? Myla, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, I sir. You, sorry. I need you to read the three steps of constructing a 60 degree angle that we have so far. Yes, sir. Step one mark the vertex of your angle anywhere on the paper. Let us name this point as M. Step two draw away, draw a ray MN extending in any direction and of any length. This will be one of the arms of our angle. Step three, place the tip of the compass on the point M and set its width to any measure less. Than Very good, the length of the ray. Thank you. And Nivea Gordon, can you read the, um, can you read the three steps? Nivea Gordon? I can't add Nivea. So I'm gonna ask for Brashawn Tangress, can you read the three steps? Steps for constructing a 60 degree angle. Number one, mark the vertex of your angle anywhere on the paper. Let us name this point as M. Draw a ray, MN, extending in any direction and of any length. This will be one of the arms of our angle. Number three, place the tip of the compass on the point M and set its width to any measure less than the length of the ray. Very good. So this is the first three steps, right? And again, take a picture of this and send it to me via WhatsApp once you finish writing this now. Once you finish writing this now. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna move. I'm gonna put this inside the, the, the chat the chat for those persons who are still writing. Um I'm gonna put this inside the chat for those persons who are still writing. 
So now we want to move on to the, the next steps. So All right, so we're gonna go on to step number four. So step number four, the fourth thing that we wanna do is we want to, uh, with the tip, of the compass, write this down for me, please. With the tip of the compass, still on M, draw an arc, draw an arc so as to cut the ray MN at some point. Um, say P. Uh, well, let's call this point. So we're gonna call this point P. So you would you're gonna keep the point still on M. Do not change the size of your compass. Keep it still on M. Right, and then what you're gonna do is you're going to draw an arc, right? You're gonna draw an arc that's gonna go and cut the line, the line, the sorry, the ray that you just uh, that you just constructed or that you just drew. So again, let me show you what I mean. So we have, let me just show you. So what you do is you. You have um, the compass is still on point M, right? Just notice that. So the compass is still on point M. Then you're gonna remember you, you had the compass. You extended the compass size to here. You extended the compass size all the way up to the this particular point. Then you're gonna cut the the ray that you just um, drew, and you're gonna extend the uh, you're gonna extend this arc all the way till it till it reaches about here, right? So you draw an arc such that it reach to about here. Okay, so that's how you do it. All right, make sure you cut this line. So you start at M, and then you draw an arc so that it's going to cut this line segment, this um this ray, right there. Okay, so that's the fourth, that's the fourth step, all right? So let me put this on this side. So make sure I draw each step for me. For those of you who do not have a compass and a ruler, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to, you're gonna need to get a geometry set. You need a geometry set if you're gonna take your exam. You cannot intend an exam without a geometry set. You're preparing to fail. So you make sure you have a geometry set. If you don't have an, a geometry set already bought, then you need to ask your parents to buy you one. Or if you have the money to buy yourself one, then buy it. So we're going to call this point where the ray intersects the arc. We're going to call that point B. Okay. Next, number five. Keeping the width right sorry keeping <clears throat> keeping the width unchanged you want to place the tip of the compass place the tip of the compass on the point p and draw another arc 
cutting the arc drawn in the previous step at some point. Let us call this point I call this point Q. So what we're gonna do is we're going to keep the width of the compass. It's very important. Once you already set your compass to a certain length, you don't want to change it. Because if you if you if you start changing the compass length, then it won't be 60 degrees. All right. So what you want to do is you want to keep the compass length the same. All right. Keep the compass length the same. And so once you keep the compass length the same, then what you're going to do is you're going to, uh, let me just show you this. So you're going to keep the compass length the same. Then you're going to come to the point P, the same point P where the ray intersected with that this um, arc, the same point, you're going to come right here, right? Keep the same compass at the same, um, keep it the same measurement, keep the width unchanged. You're going to come right here and then you're going to draw an arc. Right, right there. And this arc is going to intersect the first arc, and we call this point Q where it intersects that arc. Okay. So we're gonna draw another arc right here. So the first thing you do is you draw a first arc right there. Then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna draw another arc, and this arc right here is going to cut the first arc. All right. Do you all understand that? Do you all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Let me know if you understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, good. So I'm going to put this right here. So again, make sure that you are drawing the steps that I have outlined. Make sure you draw it so you get to be able to have it for your notes. So I'm going to put this up here. I'm going to put this right here as well. Next, the uh, fifth, the sixth step, all right? And the sixth and final step is you want to connect, connect the, connect the points. Connect the points M and Q with a straight line. And extend it from a ray and extend it to form a ray ML. So width and keeping so width and keeping and connect. So the next thing that you're gonna do is that I should say um, the angle formed um, if we would have a seven step. Oh, we should have a uh, the angle form. We should have a seven step, which is measure the angle. Measure the angle using a protractor. We'll measure the angle um, LMN using a protractor should be sixty degrees. It should 
measure 60 degrees. If it doesn't measure 60 degrees, then that means you have to do it again, right? It should measure 60 degrees. Um, if not, then try the steps again. Okay, so it should measure to 60 degrees. Right? If, if, it's, if it doesn't measure 60 degrees, then that means you did something wrong and you need to go back and, and correct one of your steps, right? So what do we mean? We mean that we're going to draw a line to intersect Q, right? To intersect where those two arcs met. And you're gonna use a ruler to draw that line, right? So uh, let me just show you what I mean by that. So here, if you all look carefully, right? Um, we have a ruler and where we start here, we have a ruler and we're gonna cut where the two arcs met, right? We're gonna cut and draw a line right there where the two arcs meet. And that line is going to form a ray called M ML and that's gonna form an angle, which is going to be um, 60 degrees. So you have to use a ruler in order to draw this line, right? So that's gonna be, and then after that, you just measure the angle and then the measurement of the angle, it should be, it should be 60 degrees once you did everything right. Again, if it's not 60 degrees, then obviously you have to change some things, okay? Okay, good. So, Aliana, I need you to read the steps for me, please, four through seven. For with the tip of the compass still on M, draw an arc so as to cut the ray M M at some point. Let us call this point P five. Keeping the width unchanged, place the tip of the compass on the point P. And draw another arc, cutting the arc drawn in the previous step at some point. Let us call this point Q. Connect the points M and Q with a straight line and extend it to form a ray ML. Seven, measure the angle element using a protractor. It should measure 60 degrees. If not, try the steps. Again, very good. Thank you for reading that. And we have Samantha. I need you to read the steps for me. Steps for constructing a 60 degree angle. Number four, with the tip of the compass still on M, draw an arc so as to cut the ray MN. At some point, let us call this point P. Number five, keeping the width unchanged, place the tip of the compass on the point P and draw another arc, cutting the arc, draw in the previous step. At some point, let us call this point Q. Number six, connect the points M and Q with a straight line and extend it to form a ray ML. Number seven, measure the angle LMN using a protractor. It should measure 60 degrees. If not, then try the steps again. Very good. So it, it, it should measure 60 degrees. If it doesn't measure 60 degrees, then you have to try the steps again. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come to this particular point M, you're gonna draw an arc, that arc should cut your ray, MN, at this point, call it P. Then you're gonna go to P and draw another arc. That arc should cut the first arc at some point, let's call it Q. And then you're gonna come to your starting point, your vertex, and you're going to draw a line that intersects the two arcs that was just formed, all right? And that should, and then you're gonna, after that, then you sh you're gonna measure your angle and it should be um, 60 degrees in measure. All right, once you have this written down, I need you to take a picture of this and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, once you have this written down, I need you to take a picture of it and send it to me via WhatsApp. Everyone should have this, should be writing this. And if you already finished writing this, then I need you to send a picture of it and send it to me via WhatsApp. Um, Paul, read, read um, steps four through seven on how to construct the 60 degree angle. With the tip of a compass, still on end, 
draw an arc so as to capture ray MA. At some point, let us call this point P by keeping the width unchanged, unchanged. Place the tip of a compass on the point P and draw another arc, cutting for arc drawing in the previous step. At some point, let us call this point Q, six, connect. The point of M and Q with a straight line and extend it to the form array ML, seven, measure. The angle LMN using a protractor, it should measure to 60 degrees. If not, then try this steps again. Very good. If not, then try the steps again. Let me know if y'all understand um, the steps on how to construct a 60 degree. Let me know if you understand it. I understand. I understand. Yes, sir. Summer, you understand? Yes, sir. Kingston? Yes, sir. Olivia? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, understand, sir. Malik, you said you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. It may uh, be a bit difficult if you don't have a protractor, sir. You mean a compass? Yes, sir. Yeah, if you don't have a compass, then it's gonna be um, difficult. So that's why you need a compass. If you don't have a compass, please make sure I get a compass. You need a geometry set, okay? So you'll be able to do this properly. Again, I need you to take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Um, I need I need to take I need you to take a picture of your notes and send it to me via WhatsApp. Where's um, where's a Johnny? A Johnny, are you there? Yes. Um, where's your notes? I'm sorry. Okay. And Akiro, where's Akiro? Akiro, can you hear me? I can't hear from Akiro. Um, Aliano, where's Aliano? Yes, sir. Are you finished with the notes? Uh, the notes aside, still drawing the diagram. Okay. And Angel, where's Angel? Angel, can you hear me? I can't hear from Angel. Where is um Ashane Fernanda? Where's Ashane? Ashane. Ashane Fernanda, can you hear me? I can't hear from Ashane. How about um Brashawn? Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, Ashane. Where's Ashane? Right here. Um, are you finished right now on the notes? Yes, sir, but I can't set it right now because I usually set it on. I can't find right now. So when my movie comes home, I can set it. Okay, no problem. And um, for me, I was finishing up this paper. You haven't finished that yet? No, sir. 2021. I almost finished though. I just no. send you some work. I don't get. What, what number are you on? 16. 17. Going on, sir. I feel like you've been on the paper forever, Brashawn. Come on. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Um, where's Brianna Roll? Yes, sir. Um, did you send your notes yet? Um, I have to send number six and seven. Okay. That's good. And where is Bri and Bri? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, do you all understand? How I explained to do the 60 degree angle? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, did you send your notes yet? No, sir. I'm still on number seven, sir. I will send my notes. Okay, no problem. And Chai, Chai, where's your notes? I'm still writing them. What number are you on? Number six. Number six. Um, I need you all to quickly write this down. We do not have eternity. Okay. So I need you all to quickly write this down. Um where is um where is uh Dari? Dari, did you um did you write that write that write this down? Where's Dari?
diary, which he says. Diary says, yes, sir. Okay, good. Um, diary, I need you to send in your notes. And Dia Gibson, where's Dia? Um, Dia, where's your notes? Ready, send them? Okay, you will do this right now. Okay. Dion, where's Dion? Yeah. Um, Dion, I gave you a quiz to do from Friday and you never sent that to me. I did it, but I didn't send the picture of the grade. Um, what you got? I think it was a 75. You have to redo that, um, Dion. I told you to do it and take a picture of the, the grade. So after class, I need you to send that to me once you finish it. Yes, I will. And you can't take on um, so long on one assignment, Dion. That don't make no sense. And uh, Darnik, where's Darnik? Ah, uh, Darnik. Darnik, you ready to send in your work? Um, Darnik, you have to type inside the chat because uh, you're speaking, but we cannot hear you. I don't think your mic is working. So type inside the chat and let me know your response. Gilbriano, where's Gilbriano? Where's Gilbriano? Yes, sir. Um, Gilbriano, did you already send in your yes, notes? Sir. Did you? Yes, sir. I'm still writing. You're still writing. Yes, what sir. Number you on? I'm number six. Number six. Okay. I uh, have to start over. Okay. Um, where's Egypt? Egypt, are you there? Where's Egypt? Um, so far I have, for some persons have sent me their work, so waiting on the others. Um, where's Myla? Myla, can you hear me? And then from my love. Yes, sir. Um, so I got this picture for some reason. I got this picture for some reason. The other ones, what I need you to do is I need you to um I need you to send me the picture of the other notes because I think it's they're sending now. So send me a picture of the other notes. Yes, sir. Um for for the first for the first five for the first three. I can't hear you. You 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 went out. The notes for the first three steps. No, the previous notes for the class because I finally get get um see your work. So I need you to send a picture of the notes that you haven't sent so far. Yes, sir. Okay, so let me go over over this one more time before I move the slide because we have to move on. So the first thing we have to do is we have to. Um, after we're ready, okay, uh, Nakari says you're number five. Okay, good. Thank you, Nakari, for the ex um, explanation. So, um, so what we have here is we have this point M. What we're going to do is we're going to draw, we're going to use our compass to draw an arc. All right, and we're going to call this point P, okay? And then point P is going to be the point that intersects with this ray, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to come here at point P and then draw an arc. We're going to call this point Q. Then we're going to draw a line that is going to intersect the arcs. We're going to call that point Q. And the 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 combination of the two rays forms an angle. So 
that angle form is supposed to be 90 degree, um, 60 degrees. Now, what you have to do is you have to use a protractor to measure it to see if it's indeed 60 degrees. If it is 60 degrees, then you, are, you have done it accurately. If it's not, then you have to redo it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a picture of this. How many persons have already sent me their work? Let me know, please. If you already sent me your work, let me know. I did. Yeah. China, Olivia. I know. Someone. I know. All right. Anyone else have, have you already I sent know. me your work? I did so. Okay, good. The rest of you who haven't sent me your work, you need to do so quickly because we are moving on to the next part. So I'm gonna take a picture of this and put it inside the chat for the benefit of those who are still writing. Um, the rest of us, let's move on to, um, I want us to do it, do several more examples of it. So here we drew, um, we, we constructed an angle of 60 degrees and we call it LMN, right? Um, I'm, we're going we're gonna to do another example of this, right? So what we want to do here is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I could share my screen with you all so you could be able to see my screen. All right, so. Okay, so. So I'm gonna use this um, this site. It's a very nice site for drawing constructions. Um, it's called Matspad Co UK. So uh, if you don't have a geometry site, you could also use this to practice. Um, so what the instructions is gonna be, let me just write the instructions down. And if you have a if you actually have a geometry set, then you could actually do it. If you don't, then you just have to write it and draw it using a ruler. So this is gonna be example number one. We wanna construct, construct. Now, when they say construct, they mean use a compass and the protractor and stuff like that. It's because when you can when you're constructing, you're not you're not just going to like when you can when you when you're constructing, you have to actually like build it from the ground up. But if they say draw, then you just have to use your ruler or, or protractor. But if they say construct, you definitely have to use your compass. So construct a 60 degree angle, label it. We're gonna label it um, um, RST. So label it RST. So construct a 60 degree angle and label it RST, right? So the first thing that we're gonna do here is that we're gonna get our ruler, right? Get our ruler. And then we're going to um, draw a line, say we're gonna draw a line that's gonna extend in this direction. So I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna draw a line of any length, right? It's in this ruler. Notice it's a straight line, right? And I'm gonna call this point. What letter am I gonna call this point right here? What letter am I gonna call this point? This one. Am I gonna call it R, S, or T? R. R? No, I'm not gonna call it R. What is the letters for the base? Dari says, um, S, yeah, S, S is correct. So I'm gonna call this point S. This is gonna be S, right? And I'm gonna um, put an arrow, so this is our ray. So to indicate that we are drawing a ray. And I'm gonna call this um, T, right? So we have S and we have T, right? So, so far we have the ray, S, T, right? Now, what's the next thing that we have to do, um, China, what we have to do? Where's China? Yes, sir. Do you remember the next step? You mean step number three? Mm hmm You say we have to place the tip of the compass on the point and then set 
its width to any measure less than the length of the ray. Very good. So we're going to um, start our tip at the point S. Now, you don't want to make it too far. So out here would be too much, right? Here would be, uh, I wouldn't do it here. It's still too much. And after, I would put it like about, let's do it about half, right? So you want to put it at about half. Now, for those of you who just arrived, let me um, send the notes for the first two slides. Right? That's the first one. That's the second one. So, Javin, I know you just reached. The notes for the first two slides are in the chat. So, we're going to take our compass, right? We're going to put it at about halfway um, of the ray, right? And so we're going to lock it in. So when I lock it in, that means that I don't want this. I don't want this to change. I want it to stay in that position. I'm not going to change that, right? And I'm going to draw an arc. It's going to go down here. I'm going to go all the way to about here, all right? So again, I'm going to draw the arc from all the way down here below, all right? All the way up, right? That's my arc. All right. Um, so this is my arc, right? Do you all see that? I mean, if you all see that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so we draw an arc right here. All right. So after we draw this arc, the next thing that we're gonna do is I mean the diagram say label this point P, but we don't have to label it, we don't have to give it names. What we need to do is we need to go here to this particular point where the two lines intersect. Sorry, where the arc and where the ray intersects, right? We're going to go right here. And then we're going to draw another arc, right? Another arc right here, right? I'm going to draw another arc right there, right? The second arc, right? We're going to draw this right here, okay? And then after we already do that, does anyone remember what's the last step? Once we already have the arc, yeah, what was the last step that we have to do? Draw a line in between the middle of the arcs. Very good. Draw a line in between the middle of the arcs, right? And so we're going to go take a line segment. You're really supposed to use a ruler. So let me just show you what I mean by using a ruler. So you're supposed to use a ruler and start right here and use your ruler to. Go all the way up here. And so so you're really supposed to use your ruler to draw the line, the line segment. Okay, so if you look carefully, we have to draw a line from here to here. Right, draw a line from here to here, and you're just gonna draw one line and make sure I cut it right. Now, since I'm on a laptop, I could just, you know, draw a straight line from here, just to make sure everything is accurate. And so, I'm going to have mine right there. Okay. All right. Let me know if you understand this, please. Again, let me know if you understand this. So far what I'm doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, that's only like two persons. There's way more than two persons that's at this class. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I understand. Okay. Um, oh, the, the rest of you are not answering. Do you understand what I'm doing or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So after we already draw this line from point S all the way to cut it, Right. Um, what do we have to do in order to check if our answer is right? What do we have to do to check if our answer is right? Measure to see if it's 60 degrees. Yeah, measure to see if it's 60 degrees. What is the instrument that is used to measure angles? Protractor. Protractor. So we have to go ahead and get our protractor and measure 60 degrees. So it's going to be right here. There we go. And so if you look carefully, right, 
this is zero, this is 10, this is 20, this is 30, this is 40, this is 50, and this is exactly what? 60 degrees. All right, do you all see that? So, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it is exactly 60 degrees. How many persons actually did it and got 60? I mean, if you actually did it uh, with your compass and everything and got 60. I did. I did. Yeah, Samantha, so. Olivia. Anyone else did it with their protractor and, sorry, with their compass and ruler and got 60? I did. I did. Chai, tag, tag in. Very good. Okay, so um, now we have to finish labeling this thing, right? So this is, they want it to be labeled what RST. So let's call this um, uh, let's call this R. So this R S T, and we're gonna put sixty degrees in the middle to label our angle. Okay, and so that's how we construct using a compass and a ruler, the angle RST. That's example number one. Okay. All right, so that's how we draw, um, well, that's how we construct a 60 degree angle um, using a compass and a ruler, okay? Um, okay, so I need several persons to walk me through the steps. I'm gonna start, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm gonna start with Brashawn. Um, Brashawn, walk me through, um, you know, not Brashawn, because I think Brashawn is still writing, right? Oh, so, yeah. um, okay. Samantha, walk me through um, constructing a 60 degree angle using a, a compass and a ruler. Yes, sir. First step we do is we mark the vertex of your angle anywhere on the paper. Then we no, draw in your own you in your own words. How are we gonna oh. do it? Then we draw a line. Mm -hmm. Then we name it. S and T. Mm -hmm. That's it. Go ahead. After then, we play, then we place our compass on. What else we do? Then we measure the point S and set it with to any measure measurements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To we put it actually for us we just put it in in, in the middle. That's it. Then what else? We draw an arc, right? Yes, sir. That's our first arc, and then after that, what do we do after that? After we draw the first arc, then we. Connect and connect it to the, the dot in the middle. What label that is? Okay, so we start here, all right? Start then, from there, the dot in the middle there. And then draw another arc, right? And draw another arc coming through it. Good, good. And then what are we gonna do after that? Then we're going to draw a line through the arc mm -hmm. and measure it to see if it's 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good explanation. Tay, again, I need you to explain how we got um, the... By the way, if you have this written down, um, send it for me, please. If you already have this example, take a picture of it and send it to me via WhatsApp. Um, go ahead, Tay, again, explain how we got RST. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, so first we're gonna make a point um, anywhere on the paper, and then we're going to create a ray, and we're gonna name that ray T. And ST. Um, we're ST, and then we're going to put the tip of the compass on point S, mm -hmm. and we're going to measure the width of the compass to less than half of the ray, 
and then we're gonna create an arc. Um, then we are going to, with the width of the compass unchanged, we're gonna put the compass, you know, where it intersects the ray. And mm -hmm. that's correct. Um, sorry. Um, and we're going to. Um, my apologies. And then, um, with the arc we just created, we're gonna keep the the width of the compass unchanged, and we're gonna create another arc intersecting the arc that we previously made. Yeah. And we're going to draw a line where those two arcs intersect, and we're gonna check it with a protractor to see if it measures sixty degrees. Very good. Very good, Tegan. Um, one last person I'm going to ask Kingston to explain how we got our um, our angle RST. Um, I still do not see some notes of some persons. So I need you all to take a picture of your notes and send them to me. I need you to do that. Take a picture of your notes and send them to me. Go ahead. Um, um, what's her name? Not a, not a name, Kingston. Go ahead, Kingston. Explain how we got RST. Yeah, so, so the first thing we do is draw a line and name it ST. Okay. And then after that, we construct a line. We construct a line at 60 degrees. And then we label. Mm -hmm. We're gonna construct a line at sixty degrees. No. We draw a line. We draw a ray S T. Then what we gonna do afterwards? And then after that, we can we can intersect the line. We are gonna draw an arc, right? There's an arc to yeah. the line. Uh huh. And then after that, we put the, we put the the compass. On the same on the same arc, and then we can construct another arc. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we use our ruler and we intersect that same arc and label it R. Mm -hmm. Very good. And so, how are we gonna check if it's sixty? We can use our protractor. Mm hmm very good and um it should measure exactly 60 degrees right yes sir good good all right perfect so this is how you draw it all right so let me just put this inside of the chart not the chart but in, put it this in the PowerPoint slide. So let's go, let's move back to um, our point of PowerPoint slide. And so that's how you construct a 60 degree angle. Okay, that's how you construct a 60 degree angle. All right. So this is the angle RST that we just constructed. If you do not have a geometry set, then you just have to you just have to draw it out, you know, and use a your ruler and just draw the arcs, right? But if you do have a compass and a geometry set, then actually try to make sure everything is accurate. So once you finish measure it out, everything should be sixty degrees, right? Okay, so that's how we draw, or that's how we construct a sixty degree um, angle. Right. Um, the next thing that we're going to learn how to do is we have to learn how to construct a 90 degree angle. So let's do that. So we can learn how to construct a 90 degree angle. So the next one is going to be steps for constructing. If you haven't sent in your um, 60 degree angle notes yet, please make sure send them. So steps for constructing a 90 degree angle. 
So 90 degree angle is similar to 60 degree. The only thing is that it's more steps and that's, that's just a fact. So it's a little more extra steps that you have to do, but you basically started off in a similar way that you start off a 60 degree, but then you have to do some extra stuff, okay? In order to actually get it. Can you all see my screen? No way. Let me see if you can see my screen. Um, okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. So we're going to be looking at how to construct a 60 degree angle. Uh, not a 60 degree, a 90 degree angle. Remember, like I said, for those persons who have not, um, for those persons who have not sent in their notes for the 60 degree angle, please make sure that you do that. All right. If you haven't sent in your notes for the 60 degree angle, make sure to that for me. And also the example that I just did with RST, make sure to send that as well. Okay. So like I said, you start off in the very same way when it comes to um, constructing a 90 degrees, you're going to start by, you know, marking out a point. All right and calling it, we just can call it M as well, all right? So number one, step number one, mark, mark the vertex. Excuse me, Mr. Badeep. So someone has asked me a question, I think, Kyle. Yes, sir. I was wondering if you could place in the last the last slide in the chat list. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Finished. This one? Yes, sir. That's uh, sure. I'm supposed to put this in the Thank chat. Um, okay, let me also put this one as well in the chat for those persons who need it. Okay, so next up, we have how to construct a 90 degree. So the first step is to mark the vertex of your angle. So we want to mark the vertex of your angle anywhere on the paper. Um, in our case, we're gonna call this point M. So let us let us name this point as M. So we're gonna call this point M. So we're gonna mark the vertex of our angle anywhere on the paper. We can call this point M. Okay. So like I said, we starting off in basically the same way as we did with um constructing a constructing a 90 degrees. I mean constructing the 60 degrees. So you start off by marking out your point, which is going to be the vertex of your angle right now. Next, you want to draw array MN extending in any direction. and of any length um this will be one 
of the arms of our angle. Yes, sorry. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to draw a ray MN extending in any direction of N and of any length. And just like how we did for the, just like how we did for the, um, just like how we did for the, um, for the 60 degree angle, this would be one of our arms, right? Um, this one, in this particular one, uh, they drew a, an actual line segment. The other one we did, we drew a ray. Uh, doesn't matter. Line segment, ray, it doesn't matter. Now, unless they, like, specifically tell you, like, it should be a specific length, then if they don't, then it's fine. So, first step, we want to mark the vertex, mark the vertex on, of our angle on the paper. The second step, we're gonna draw a, this is actually a line segment, draw a line segment, MN. The next thing that we wanna do is we want to place the tip of the compass on point M and draw a circle cutting, not a circle, we can say draw, draw an arc, cutting the ray, cutting the line segment rather, MN at some point. Let us call this point P. Now, what you notice is that the first three steps so far are basically identical to the steps that we did for the 60 degree. And that's because in order to draw a 90 degrees, you have to draw a 60 degree angle first, right? So to get it, to get to a 90 degree, you basically are drawing a 60 degree first. And then from there, then you're gonna do a 90, okay? That's why these three steps are literally exactly the same steps as a general rule of what we said for the 60 degree angle. So placing the point M, drawing a line segment, um, drawing an arc to cut the line segment, those are the same thing that we said for the 60 degrees, okay? All right, so we are on the third step right now. Let me just get this picture for the third one. So again, we're gonna draw an arc, right? And this arc is going to intersect our point, our line segment, um, and we're gonna call that point P, right? So, that's what we have. So basically the identical steps to, so far, identical steps to constructing a 60 degree. Put this up top, put this here, put this here.
All right, good stuff. So write this down for me. This is the first three steps for constructing the 90 degrees. I don't want to move it because I know that some of you are still writing this down. Um, Brianna Roll, can you read the three steps so far that we have? Yeah, so steps for constructing a 90 degree angle. One, mark the vertex of your angle anywhere on the paper. Let us name this point as M. Two, draw a line segment MN, extending in any direction of any length. This will be one of the arms of our angle. Three, place the tip on the compass point M and draw an arc cutting the line segment MN at some point. Let us call this point P. Very good. Thank you, Brianna. And Bree, can you read the three steps for me? That we have. By the way, by the way, one, one moment. By the way, if you already have this written down, take a picture of it and send it to me via WhatsApp. All right, again, if you already have this written down, take a picture of it and send it to me via WhatsApp. Go ahead, um, go ahead, Bree. I mean, Bri, read the, the first, first three steps. It's actually Bree, sir. Bree, sorry, sorry, Bree. Mark the vertex of your angle anywhere on the paper. Let us name the point as M. Draw a line segment MN, extending in any direction of any length. This will be one of the arms of our angle. Place the tip of the compass on the of the compass on the point M and draw an arc, cutting the line segment MN at some point. Let us call this point P. Very good. Thank you. And one more person to read the three steps before we move it. Um, I'm going to ask. Um, Summer, can you read the first three steps? Steps for constructing a 90 degree angle. Number one, mark the vertex of your angle anywhere on the paper. Let us name this point as M. Step two, draw a line segment MN extending in any direction of any length. This will be one of the arms of our angle. Step three, place the tip of the compass on point M and draw an arc cutting the line segment MN at some point. Let us call this point P. Very good. All right, let's move on. I need you to take a picture of this and send it to me via WhatsApp once you're finished with writing it down. But for now, we're going to move on to um, the next steps. Okay, so let's move on. I'm going to put this inside the chat for those who need it. All right. All right, the next steps. Let me move these. Number four. So you want to keep. Uh, and this is where this is where things change, right? So instead of instead of um anyway, let me just let me just um give you the notes first, and then we uh, we can look at the ex explanation, right? So so you want to keep the width of the compass the same, 
So keep it unchanged. Okay? Then you want to place its tip. on Q, I'm sorry, it's number four, right? Then place this tip on, on, um, on point P. And draw an arc cutting a circle. at some point let us call this point Q. So no new no new information here. It's the same um it's the same steps up to up to up to four, right? So you keep the width of the compass the same, you place its tip one point P and you draw an R cutting the circle at some point and I'm uh, not the circle drawn arc cutting the previously drawn arc cutting the previously drawn arc At some point, let us call Q. Okay. So let me just put the a picture of what we explained or what, what the sentence is basically explaining. It's telling us that we can either go to the same point P where the, where the, where the arc intersects the line segment MN. And once we go to that particular point where the, the arc, the previously drawn arc intersects with the line segment MN, then we're going to draw another arc and that arc is going to intersect with the previously drawn arc. So it says, keep the width of the compass the same, place this tip on point P and draw an arc cutting the previously drawn arc at some point. Now this angle form right here, if we were to draw a line straight through it, right? This angle form right here is, would be how many degrees, right? If we were to draw a line right here, what, what would be the angle form? It's a question anyone can answer. 60. 60 degrees, yeah. 60 degrees, but we're not gonna do that because our goal is to, you know, form a 90 degree triangle. So the next thing we're gonna do is instead of, instead of drawing a line that connects from M, M and Q, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go at Q again, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna go at Q and then we're gonna draw another arc. And this arc is going to cut this particular this the the first arc drawn okay so this is going to be point number five and again at every step you want to keep the width of the compass the same so keeping the width of the compass The same place its tip, place its tip on Q and draw another arc. Right, draw another arc cutting, which cuts. which cuts the, the arc, which cuts the first arc drawn 
at some point. Let us call this point R. So you're gonna draw another arc. So your compass is going, your compass point is gonna be at Q. And then you're gonna draw another arc that cuts the first arc that you drew. At some point, we're gonna call that point R, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so let me show you a picture of that. Again, let me show you a picture of that so you can see what's happening. So what did we do here, right? So what we did here is, let me just show you the picture. What we did here was that we started at this particular point, the same one right there at point Q, right? The same point, point Q. And then we took an, we took an, we took our compass and we draw an arc right here. All right. At this, at this point, and we call that R. Okay, that's what we basically do. That's what we basically did. So let me explain that one more time. What we did was we came, we came to point Q, right? We put our compass at point Q, right? And instead of drawing a line, right, to make it 60, what we're gonna do is actually, we're actually gonna draw an arc that's gonna come like this, all right? Do you all see that? Let me know if you all see that. I don't know. To cut this point R. Hello, are you there? Let me know if you see it. Let me know if you see what's happening. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. So we took the point Q and then we drew another line through another another arc rather, which intersects the first arc that was drawn. Okay. So let me erase all this. So now we get into how the first one is different from the second one, right? So that's how we have that one right there. Next, we're still not done, right? A lot of more, another arc to draw again. Then we want to um, keep, this is going to be number six. We want to keep, keep the tip, keep the tip of the compass still on Q. And we wanna draw another arc. above points Q and R. And this arc is gonna be important because this arc is gonna be important for carrying out the next step, okay? So, so we wanna keep the compass still at point Q, then we're gonna draw another arc above, right? So let me show you a picture of that. So Okay, so let's do that. So we have what we are going to do is we're going to draw another arc. So remember our compass is going to be at Q, right? And then we're going to draw an arc above the points R and Q. And that particular point that we're drawing is going to be important for us because that particular point is going to be used for the next step that we're about to go on, right? So this is what this, this is what I mean right here, right? 
So let me show you all. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna take you're gonna start at this. You're gonna remember you ready? You was you were at Q, and that's how you draw drew R, right? The point for R. Now you're gonna stay at Q, and then you're gonna draw another arc above, right up there. Do you all understand that? I mean, if you understand that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So you're gonna draw an arc above. All right, right down. I want to hear like three persons who said yes. The rest of you, you understand what we what we're saying right now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we yes, add sir. we add Q, and then we're gonna draw an arc above right down. Okay, and this arc is gonna be important because it's gonna be used for the next step. All right. So we put the arc right down. All right. Next up, what we're gonna do is we're going to let me um put this in the queue. Um, and we're gonna extend this open wide. All right, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. This is just the first three steps. Sorry, the, the not the first three, the second three. We have about two more steps left and then we can be done with it, but I'm not gonna put all in one on this screen because we can't fit. So I need you to take a picture of this and send it to me via WhatsApp. Once you finish writing it down and drawing this and drawing each step carefully. All right, good. So I need um, China, where's China? Yes, sir. Read the second three steps for me, please. Yes, sir. Number four, keep the width of the compass the same. Place its tip on point P and draw the an arc cutting the previous, the previously draw arc drawn arc at some point. Let us call this point Q. Number five, keep the width of the compass to seen. Place its tip on Q and draw another arc, which cuts the first drawn arc at some point. Let us call this point R. Number six, keep the tip of the compass still on Q. Draw another arc above point Q and R. Very good. Um, and where is Casey? Casey, are you there? Where's Casey? Yes, sir. Um, where are you? I'm home. Do you understand what we're doing so far? Yes, I understand. Okay, I need you to read um, four, five, and six. Number four, keep the width of the compass the same. Place its tip on the top P and draw an arc, cutting the previously joined arc at the same point. Let us call this point Q. Number five, keep the width of the compass the same. Place its tip on Q and draw another arc which cuts the first arc drawing at, the, at some point. Let us call this point R. Number six, keep the tip of the compass still on Q, then draw another arc above points Q and R. Very good. And where's Nevaeh Wallace? 
Navea Wallace, where are you? Navea Wallace, where's Navea Wallace? Can I from Navea Wallace? Where's Kyle? Kyle, can you hear me? Kyle Williamson. Where's Kyle? Hello, Kyle, can you hear me? Can I from Kyle? Ricardo, where's Ricardo? Yes, sir. Um, do you understand what we're doing so far? Yes, sir. Okay. I need you to read um the steps four, five, and six before we move on to the next steps. Step four. Keep the bit of the compass the same. Place place it place the tip on 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 point P and draw an arc cutting the previous drawing arc at some point. Let us call that point Q. Mm -hmm. keep, the of, keep the width of the compass on the same. Place place a tip on, on Q and draw another arc, which cuts the first arc drawing at some point. Let us call that point R. Uh -huh. Number six. Keep the tip of the compass still on Q. Draw another arc above point Q or not. Very good. Where's um, Reagan? Reagan, are you there? Where's Reagan? I don't know why he always does this. He only needs to be in the class for the first hour. All right, let's move on to um the next um steps. I'm gonna put the um, I'm gonna put the rest of these steps inside the chat for you. Okay. So steps for steps for constructing. Um where's Reagan? Excuse me, Mr. Bate, my bad. I just joined back. I saw you calling my phone, but my phone screen is broken, so I can't answer. But my charger, I couldn't find it. I just found it from my computer. Um, that means you're not responsible then. You can't find your charger. And why do you always do this? Why do you always um enter for the first part of the class and then you just disappear? I have bad Wi-Fi, sir. No, 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 no. You always just do that. You just enter for like thirty minutes and then you and then you disappear. I believe that's your trick or that's your tactic, but that's not gonna work out. You need to be for the full duration of math, Reagan. Do you hear me? So. Um, yes, listen I to do. me carefully. Listen to me very carefully. I am telling you that you need to be here for the full duration of math. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. All right, then, because we was gonna be having, we were not, we were not, we was not gonna be having this conversation if you don't ha habitually only come for part of it. So you need to have, you need to be here for the full duration of math class. And your excuse about your charger, you need to know where your charge is. Come on, man. So steps for constructing, oh, let's finish up the steps, right? Steps for construction, 90 degree. So we are in step number six, right? Let's move on to um, the other one, step 90 degree angle. So number seven, number, number six, number seven. 
So for number seven, we want to, um, we want to, we want to keep the, keep the same width of the compass. Um, now we want to place the width, place the tip. We want to place the tip of the compass on point R. So we're going to place the tip of the pump compass on point R and draw another arc which cuts the arc drawn in the previous step. So we wanna to go to point R, that same point R that we have on the other side. We're gonna to go to that same point and then we're gonna draw another arc, right? And we're gonna call that um, point S, all right? So again, so we're gonna to go to point R, then we're gonna draw an arc that cuts the first, that cuts the first arc that we already drew. We're gonna call that point S, all right? So there we have it, this is gonna be, um, So let me show you what I mean by this. What we're gonna do is, if you look carefully, we have, um, what we did was we came to this particular point, point R. And what we did was we drew another line, sorry, another arc. And this arc intersects the first arc that we had already drawn, all right? So we went to R and we draw another arc like this. And that intersects the arc that we already, that intersects the first arc we already had drawn. And that's gonna be called point S, all right? And then the final thing that we're gonna do is that we're just gonna draw a line straight down in the middle. And that line is going to be the 90 degrees, okay? Do you all understand that? Let me know if you understand that. So we're gonna go to point R, draw an arc. This arc is gonna, intersect the first arc that we have already drawn. Do you all understand that? Let me know if you understand that, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so we're gonna draw, go to point R and then draw an arc. So let me, um, let me erase what we have, what I have. Erase all link. Draw all drawings. So, and then the final step, step number eight, is we're going to connect the points M and S with a straight line. Extend it to form a ray. ML. So we're going to connect the points M and S with a straight line. All right. And then that's going to be our angle. Mn. I mean our right angle 
Um, and that's gonna, that's where we're gonna finish it. Okay. So let me show you this um, image. So what we have here is the last step. The last step is that after you already, um, after you already draw this arc right here, you're gonna take this line and you're gonna draw it straight down in the middle. All right, and that's gonna be a ninety degrees. Because remember, ninety degrees is ninety degrees is just a right angle, right? It's it's like an L. All right, and so that that gives us our angle L M N. Okay, so um, that's how it is. Um, wow, it's already eight o'clock. Um, it's already eight o'clock. I need you all to take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp so we could move on to English language because it's already eight o'clock. Take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Um, we have to review what we did here for constructing a ninety degrees angle. Um, and we have to move on to bisecting angles, all right? But um, we need more practice with constructing a 90 degree angle for sure. And 60. So when we come here tomorrow, those persons who do not have their, who do not have their, um, we do not have a geometry set for today, make sure that tomorrow you have your geometry set so that when we start um, reviewing over constructing 60 and, and 90, we could, you will be able to participate properly. All right, go ahead and take a picture of your notes and send it to me via WhatsApp. I need everyone to send me their math notes before we transition over to English language. So send me your math notes before we transition over to English language. Excuse me, Mr. Bettine. Go ahead. I, on the road, um, I just send my, um, my notes when I reach home. Who's this, Nakari? Bethany. Who? Oh, Bethany. Bethany. Yes, no problem. That's no problem. Thank you. Again, I need you all to take a picture of your notes and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, I need you to take a picture of your notes and send it to me via WhatsApp. All right, again, take a picture of your notes and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, take a picture of your notes and send it to me via WhatsApp.
All right. Okay, so let's move on to um, English language. All right, good. Um, the rest of you, I need you to take a picture of your notes and send it to me, please. Again, take a picture of your math notes and send it to me. Where's Ajani? Ajani, are you there? Where's Ajani? He must be there. Yes, Akiro. Um, did you get my math notes? Did you send them? I'll be send them so I get so you can see them. I'm saying, did you send them? I just asked, did you send them? That's my question. Yes, sir. Let me see. Where's a Johnny? Yes. Um, Akira, I didn't I didn't receive any information from you. What you need to do is you need to send the work and stop pretending like you send the work. Um, Ajani, did you send your math notes? No. Pardon? No. So what are you waiting on then? Send your math notes, Ajani. Hello, Ajani, do you hear me? Send the math notes. Yes. Um, the rest of you are still writing. Come on, you have to hurry up finish. Where's Myla? Where's my law? Yeah, I'm from Milo. Okay, the rest of you take a picture of your nose. Where's Nevia? Sorry, Nevia Wallace. Where's Nevia Wallace? Nevia Wallace, can you hear me? Can I from Nevea Wallace? Oh, oh, one more. Nevea Wallace. My message. My I need you to send in your work. I need you to send in the work. Where is um what's her name? Um what's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Uh Jasmine. I think Jasmine already left. I need I need her notes. Excuse me, Mr. Batik. Mm -hmm. Maybe excuse for a few minutes. Um, Jasmine, where's your notes? I need you to send your notes, please. You hear me, Jasmine? Send your notes. Um, go ahead, um, Paul. What you saying? May I be excused? For what? Excuse the bathroom. Yes, you can. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Let's move on to um let's move on to English language. So today is what? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Today is Monday. Monday. Monday the twenty second of April twenty twenty four. The subject is of course English language. And today we're going to be looking at closed passages. Closed passages. Um, now, when I say closed passages, um, Nivea, do you know what I mean when I say closed passages? You ever heard that before? Yes, so. What does that mean? A like, uh, closed passage. Go ahead. A closed passage is when you um read a passage and you have to rewrite it, but using your own words or a word similar to the words within the passage. Very good, very good. So basically, a closed passage is basically like she said, when you have to determine which word fits properly into it. And so, 
Um, so to define it, um, to define it, we can say that um, let's um, let's define what what are closed passages in general, and we're gonna talk about like some some we talk about how to actually do them, right? So we say. Excuse me, Mr. Bidu. Uh huh. Go ahead. May I use the bathroom first? No, not you. Definitely not. I keep on telling you that you can't use the bathroom in my class because you always just do the same thing. You always have to go somewhere. I don't understand what happened, you Kyle. Every class you have to go to the restroom. That don't make no sense. So let's, let's start off with the definition of a closed passage. So a closed passage um, a closed passage is is a contextual. So when they, when we talk about contextual, that means that you have to use like context clues, right? Yeah. It's supposed to be C L O Z E, not C L O S E, right? Close passage. So it's a contextual analysis strategy that helps students learn to predict and verify the meaning of unfamiliar words that have new or unusual meanings by searching for clues in the nearby words. So when you are doing a closed passage, you're basically predicting uh, and predict basically means that you're going to, you're gonna figure out what word you're gonna be, you're gonna use in a particular context based on um, based on the context clues that you have in the surrounding passage, all right? So again, a closed passage is a contextual analysis strategy that helps students to learn to predict. So you're gonna figure out, you're gonna um, determine the meaning of words that you may not be familiar with, um, and you're gonna do that by looking at the clues um, in the nearby word. So you have some clues that's gonna be there. And so you're gonna figure out like what words, what word fits in a particular scenario based on the rest of the whole sentence. All right. Do you all understand that? Let me know if you understand what I just explained. Let me know. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, it's only one person. Anyone else understand what I just explained? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, learning, learning to use context clues, learning to use context clues is a skill that develops over time with students practicing the skill with multiple print 
and digital tax. And diverse media and formats and lengths. So closed passages really test your ability to use context clues, all right? And context clues just basically is when you look at the surrounding words, look at the surrounding, um, look at the context, look at the words surrounding a particular word and try to figure out like what hints you can get to, uh, to get an understanding of what that word might mean or what word in the context of closed passages, what word would fit in that particular, um, in that particular sentence, right? All right, how many persons are good at um, context clues? Miss, yes, sir. Sit again. I'm good at it. I'm you good at that? Kinda. Sit again. Kinda. Kinda, okay. All right. All right, so let's um let's go ahead and do a, a closed passage. Um once you finish, write this down. Then we can go ahead and do the closed passage. Jevin, can you read the information we have on the screen so far? The closed passage is a context, context, contextual. Contextual analysis. 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 Great. Great. Great, right? Strategy. That strategy that helps students learn to predict and view, view the meaning of on from former on former words. Unfamiliar words. Unfamiliar words. That have new or unuseful, unusual, 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 unusual meanings by searching for the clues in the nearby words. Learning to use context clues as a skill that develops over time with students practicing the skill, the skill with multiple print and digital tests and the views, the views. Digital tasks diverse. and diverse. Diverse. Uh -huh. Media. Media. Uh -huh. Formats and, and lengths. Very good. Very good. Okay, so let's go ahead and do um, an example of a closed passage. By the way, if you have that those two paragraphs written down, then take a picture of it and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, if you have those two passages written down, Take a picture of it and send it to me via WhatsApp. Should I do English or math? Um, you you can catch up on the maths. I need you to focus on English since we're we're talking about it now. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Um, Naya, how far were you able to get into in the paper? I'm on question 12 right now. 12? Okay.
So we're gonna, you don't have to write, by the way, you don't have to write down this passage. Please do not write down the passage. The passage is too long to write. What, you go, what we're going to do is, um, by the way, let me put this inside the chat for those persons who are still writing. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, actually like read it and then from reading it, then we're going to answer the questions from the closed passage, right? Okay. Oh, boy. All right, um, Malik, where's Malik? I'm here, so I need you to be one of the readers. Um, so we're gonna be reading this passage together, and um, okay, so all right, anyone else want to volunteer to read? Well, anyone want to volunteer to read? I need strong readers, so. I want Malik to read number, the first one. Then I want, um, uh, anyone else want to volunteer to read? Dari, Dari, you can't, you can't, we can't hear you. That's the problem. Um, so Malik for number one, then I'll let Tay again read the yes, second so paragraph. My mic is work. Oh, your mic is work. Okay, good. Dari, read the third. So Malik. Taken diary, and then the next slide. I would want who else? Um, Aliana, read the okay. Aliana would read this one additionally. So Malik Taken diary, Aliana, and then th the next slide. I'll choose someone else once we come to that slide. Go ahead, um, Malik. Start from how can how parents can help. <clears throat> children are not born with sex. Start so from the title. The title. Start from the title. Yes, sir. Passage one. How can how parents can help their children to form long lasting friendships? Children are not born with social skills. Child rearing experts believe it is partially parents' responsibility to prepare children to interact successfully with their peers and learn how to be an individual others like to be around. That's right. Parents should actually help their children to develop long lasting friendships. This means they can teach children skills such as how to apologize and how to accept apologies, how to meet and talk to people, how to cooperate, how to ask for favors, how to be patient and be and respectful. There are many specific ways in which parents can help their children to have long lasting friendships. First, they can provide them with opportunities to spend time with other children by inviting, by inviting them to their home, whether in person or by using the internet. During such visits, children can watch movies, cook, and play games. When allowing their children to have these opportunities, parents must respect their privacy, but give them specific guidelines. Okay. Um, go ahead, diary parents. Parents can also let their children participate in clubs or teams and help them to learn games and sports, all of which tend to be important for school-aged children. It is easier to join in and have fun with other children if they know the rules and have the basic skills to participate. In teaching these, parents should ensure that a sport or a game does not turn into something that their children must do but do not enjoy doing. Very good. Aliana, additionally. Additionally, parents can set clear rules for appropriate behavior because children learn social skills in part through family rules about how to treat others. How their parents treat them when they break a rule will influence how children respond to others because they often imitate 
their parents' actions, parents need to be firm but respectful during times of discipline. All right, good. Um, go ahead. I need what's her name? China, Nivea, and who else? Kingston. And the last two I want is Priyana Roller. Yes, so. I mean, would you read the last two? Go ahead, um, China. Furthermore. Furthermore, although most parents teach their toddlers how to say say please and thank you. They should continue coaching them as they grow older and experience more challenging social situations. Instead of parents allowing children to run away crying or to become more hostile during conflicts, they should help them to identify and manage negative feelings and situations, as well as solve problems, which are all important social skills that build maturity. For example, a parent can say, how are you upset because Jamie didn't include you in the game? Next, the child can be helped to brainstorm solution, then discuss those so solutions she or he comes up with and pick a reasonable one. Very good, Nivea. It is also important for parents to communicate with children, talking with them. This time is not for giving instructions or lecturing, but just for talking about things that interest both parent and child. Letting children talk and listening to them will help parents learn more about them and it will let the young ones practice the very important social skill of holding a conversation. Very good. Another skill parents can teach their children is learning to see others' point of view. Children can develop this ability by talking about different situations. For example, when their children tell them about problems at school, they should ask how they think the other, per the other people in the situation felt and why they acted as they did. This will help them put themselves in the other individual's shoes. Or when parents are reading with their children, they should stop to ask characters, I mean, ask how characters are feeling and why they do certain things. Thank you, Brianna. Finally, fitting in with friends is very important to school age children. So they may do things they seem silly to, that seem silly to adults, like wearing ripped skinny jeans or dancing the floss. However, if children's behavior is not dangerous or offensive, parents do not need to fret all fret. Parents do not need to fret over the small matters. Friendships play a crucial role in developing social skills. Parents cannot make friends for their children. However, their love, patience, and support can help their children succeed at forming strong, strong friendships. Very good. Very good reading. So in a nutshell, um, in a nutshell, China, tell me what the what this passage was about. This passage basically teaching your children. I'm telling your parents how to teach the children about the importance of like making friends and make sure to like be good and respectful to who you hang out with. Okay. And in a nutshell, um, Malik, what is this passage talking about? It's talking about how parents can raise the social skills of their child of their children. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else? And, it, and how they can form friendships with children and learning 
teaching their children how to form friendships with others. Okay. How to properly communicate. How to properly communicate. Very good. And say again, um, summarize the story for me. What it's talking about. Um, the story is the passage is speaking about how parents can help their children form long lasting friendships, communicate with others, and just be a decent person overall. Very good. All right, so let's go ahead and consider the close passage. Where's Gil Brianna? Is Gil Brianna here? Oh, wow. Is Gil Brianna here? Where's Gil Brianna? No. She left. Okay. Um. Okay, so this is gonna be what I need you to do is for inside of your book. Do you don't have to write down the again? Do not write down the passage. Only write down the answers that we have. Right. So you're gonna put seventeen. And you're gonna put the answer. You're gonna put eighteen. And you're gonna put the answer. You're gonna put nineteen. And you're gonna put the answer. So only the number and the answers I need. All right. Do you all understand that? Yes, sir. yes sir. Good. Yes, sir. So let's go ahead with this one. It says, this means children can be blank. Sorry, this means that children can be blank skills such as how to apologize and accept apologies. So you have to go to the passage and find the word. Let me read the, the sentence again. This means children can be blank skills such as how to apologize and accept apologies. So let's go to the passage. We're going to go to line four. Line four, this is line one, two, three, four. This means they can teach children skills such as how to apologize and accept apologies. Let me read it again. This means they can teach children skills such as how to apologize and accept apologies. So what word are we going to put for 17? What word are we going to? This means that children can be Blank. What word are we going to put for number 17? Taught. Uh. Taught. Mm -hmm. right. Taught. Very good. This means that children can be taught. And how did you got taught? Taught comes from which word? Which word in the passage does taught come from? Teach. 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 Very good. So this means that children can be taught. Right? Taught. So taught is the right word. Taught skills such as how to apologize um, and accept apologies, all right? Do you all understand that? Let me know if you, all, you understand it so far, what we have. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so only yes, three sir. of you. The rest of you, do you all understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Remember, the only thing that you're writing, the only thing that you're writing is the number and the answer, okay? All right, number... Number 18. Ajani, do you understand this? Yes. Pardon? Yes. Pardon? Yes, sir. Okay. Remember, you do not respond to me with yes. It, it's either yes, sir, or no, sir. Do you hear me, Ajani? Yes. Pardon? Yes, sir. Okay, so there are many specific, let's go to the number 18. There are many specific ways in which parents can help their children have long lasting friendships. First, they can do so by blank them with opportunities to spend time with other children. First, they can do so by blank them with opportunities to spend time with other children. So we, what can we put here? Or yeah, let's just let's, let's go to pass. We have to go to line seven. So line seven, where's line seven? First, they can provide them with opportunities to spend time with their children by inviting them to their home. Let me read it again. First, they can provide them with opportunities to spend time with other children by inviting them to their home. So let's go out. First, 
they can do this by blank them with opportunities to spend time with other children. What word should go here? First, they can do this by blank them with opportunities to spend time with other children. What word should go here for number 18? Providing. 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 Very good. Providing. By providing. Providing. Um, where's Naya? Yes, sir. What number you are now? Oh, I was doing the English. Oh, you could, you could, you could, because I think you know how to do this. So you could go and finish the math. That's yes, more sir. useful. Um, number 19. Parents can also allow blank of their children in clubs or teams and help them learn Games and sports, all of which can be important for school as children. And repeat, parents can also allow the blank of their children in clubs or teams and help them to learn games and sports. So let's go to the passage. This is lying. What lying should we go to for this answer? Lying what? 11. Lying 11. So let's go there. Okay, line 11. Parents can also let their children participate in clubs or teams and help them to learn games and sports, all of which tend to be important for school-aged children. Again, parents can also let their children participate in clubs or teams and help them learn games and sports, all of which tend to be important for school-aged children. What are we going to put for this one? Let's see. Parents can also allow the blank of their children in clubs or teams and help them to learn games and sports. Participation. Do you agree with um Dari? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Parents can yes. also allow the participation of their children in clubs or teams. Yes, that's correct. Participation. Because it comes from the word participate inside the passage. So inside of your book, I need you to put 17, taught, 18, providing, and 19, participation. So far. Participation. Okay. Parents can also allow the participation of their children in clubs or teams, right? All right, next. It is easier joining in and blank fun with their, with other children if they know the rules and have the, ba and have the basic skills to participate. It is easier joining in and blank fun with other children if they know the rules and have the basic skills to participate. So, this is going to go to line 12. So, line 12, this is line 10, line 11, line 12. It is easier to join in and have fun with other children if they know the rules and have basic skills. It is easier to join in and have fun with other children if they know the rules and have the skills to participate. So, let's go here. It is easier joining in and blank fun with other children if they know the rules. So what word goes here for line for here? Having. Sorry, you say having? Let's see. It is easier in joining in and have fun. Yeah, having. Having. Do you all see that? The rest of y'all, do you all see that? It is easier in joining in and having fun. The rest of you, do you understand that? Yes, yes, sir. So, yes, sir. So, having. Oh, yes. Very good. Having. 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 It is easier joining in and having fun with other children if they know the rules. All right. Number 21. 
So you're gonna write the nu the number and the word. So 17 taught, 18 providing, 19 participation, and 20 having. Where's Joseph? Joseph, can you hear me? Where's Joseph? Joseph Kalma. What's up? Where's your math notes? Yeah, I was about to send them. You wasn't about to no send them. Stop lying. Because if you was about to send them, I already have them. Because it's 8.38 and math finished like 39 minutes ago. So what you need to do is you need to send the math notes. Um, Kalma? Come on, what are you doing? Send the math notes. You hear me? Yes, sir. All right, let's move on to number 21. Additionally, parents can set clear rules for appropriate behavior because children learn skills in part through family rules about blank of others. Additionally, parents can set clear rules for appropriate behavior because children learn social skills in part through family rules about the blank of others. Um, let's move on to the passage. This is line 16. Additionally, parents can set clear rules for appropriate behavior because children learn social skills in part through family rules about how to treat others. Let me read it again. Additionally, parents can set clear rules for appropriate behavior because children learn social skills in part through family rules about how to treat others. So what we have for number 21. What y'all put for number 20? What y'all gonna put for this one? Additionally, parents can set clear rules for appropriate behavior because children learn social skills in part through family rules about the blank of others. What y'all have for this one? You have yours? No. Treatment? Treatment. Treatment. About the treatment of others. So treatment goes hell. About the treatment of others. Treatment. Additionally, parents can set clear rules for appropriate behavior because parents, because children learn skills, so because children learn social skills in part through family rules about the treatment of others. So treatment is the correct one. Number 22. How, we still on the first page? Oh, wow. How their parents treat them when they break a rule will influence how children respond to others because there will be some blank of parents' actions. Parents need to be firm but respectful because there will be some blank of their parents' actions. Parents need to be firm but respectful. Okay, so we're going to go to line 17. Line 17. Okay. Because they often imitate their parents' actions. It is 15, so 16, 17. How parents treat them when they break a rule will influence how children respond to others. Because they often imitate their parents' actions, parents need to be firm but respectful during times of discipline. Again, how their parents treat them when they break a rule, when influence how children respond to others, because they often imitate their their parents' actions, parents need to be firm but respectful during times of discipline. What y'all have for that one? Um, because there will be some blank of their parents' actions. What do you think? Imitation. Imitation. Very good. Imitation. Imitation. Because there will be some imitation. Because they come from the word imitate. So there will be some imitation. Next, number 23. Again, inside of your book, you're going to write the number and the word. So 17 taught, 18 providing, 19 participation, 20 having, 21 treatment, and 22 imitation. Number 23, instead of parents allowing children to run away, crying, or become hostile during conflicts, they should help them with important social skills such as identifying and blank 
negative feelings and situations, as well as solving problems. Instead of parents allowing children to run away, crying, or become hostile during conflicts, they should help them in important social skills such as identifying and blank negative feelings and situations, as well as solving problems. So um, what is that? Let's go on to line 23. 923. This is 20 right now. So we're going to go to 21, 22. This is 20, 21, 22, 23. Wait, what did they say? Line one. Line 22. Line 22 is what we're looking at. Line 22. Okay, this is 20, 21, 22. They should help them to identify and manage negative feelings and situations as well as solve problems. They should help them I they should help them to identify and manage negative feelings and situations as well as solve problems. Again, they should help them to identify and manage negative feelings and situations as well as solve problems. So we're gonna put for this one. Let's see. They should help them with important social skills such as identifying and blank negative feelings and situations. Solving. Not solving. Managing. 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 Managing is correct. Okay. Managing. So let's go back. Managing. Again, you're going to write the number and the answer. So 17 taught, 18 providing. Uh, I'm sorry. 18 providing, 19 participation, 20 having. 21 treatment, 22 imitation, and 23 managing, managing. Okay, managing. Let's move on to the next one, managing. Okay, next. It is important for parents to communicate with children, talking with them. This time is not for given instructions or blank, sorry. This time is not for giving instructions or a blank, but for just but just for talking about things that interest both parent and child. This time is not for giving instructions or a blank, but just for talking about things that interest both parent and child. This time is not for giving instructions or a blank, but just for talking about things that interest both parent and child. All right, so let's move on to, the, what is a line 27? So we need to go to line 27 and see this is what, 25, 26, 27. This time is not for giving instructions or lecturing, but just for talking about things that interest both parent and child. This time is not for giving instructions or lecturing, but just for talking about things that interest both parent and child. So what we're going to put for this one, this time is not for giving instructions or a blank, but just for a lecture. A lecture, very good. Lecture. So, lecture. Lecture. So, you're going to put lecture. Lecture. This time is not for giving instructions or a lecture, but just for talking about things that interest both parent and child. Next, or when parents are reading with their children, blank to ask how characters are feeling helps children to put themselves in, in, in other individual shoes. Or when parents are reading with their children, blank to ask how characters are feeling helps children to put themselves in other individuals' shoes. Let's go ahead and read it. This is, if they go to line 34, line 34, line 34. Or when parents are reading with their children, they should stop to ask how characters fe are feeling and why they do certain things. Or, or when parents are reading with their children, they should stop to ask how characters are feeling or why they do certain things. 
All right, so let's move on to the next question. Um, number 35, or when parents are reading with their children, or when parents are reading with their children, blank to ask how characters are feeling helps to put themselves in other individuals' shoes. Would you love for that one? Stopping. What you said, stopping. Or when parents are reading with their children, stopping to ask. Yeah, that's right. Stopping to ask. Stopping to ask is correct. All right. Stopping to ask how. Stopping. To ask how characters are feeling helps children to put themselves in other individuals' shoes. And lastly, Finally, fitting in with friends is important to school its children so they may so they may do things that seem like blank to adults, such as wearing rib, skinny jeans, or dancing the floss. Finally, fitting in with friends is important to school its children, so they may do things like blank. Sorry, so they may do things that seem like blank to adults, such as wearing rib skinny jeans or dancing the floss okay so let's move on to this is line 36 finally fitting in with friends is very important to school age children so they may do things that seem silly to adults like wearing ripped jeans or dancing the floss finally fitting in with friends is very important to school age children so they may do things that seem silly to adults like wearing ripped jeans and skinny jeans. Sorry, like wearing ripped skinny jeans or dancing the floss. So what should we put out? Finally, fitting in with friends is important to school age children, so they may do things like do things that seem like blank to adults. What's the word that goes there? Silliness. Silliness. Very good. They may do things that seem like silliness to adults. So silliness is gonna be this right. Silliness. So S I -R. Okay. All right, good. Okay, so number 17 is taught. Number 18 is providing. Number 19 is participation. Number 20 is having number 21 is treatment number 22 is imitation number 23 is managing number 24 is lecture number 25 is stopping number 26 is silliness so this is how you do a closed passage let me know if you all you all understand how, how we how we got our answers let me know yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir okay very good so i need you to take a picture of your work and send it to me please Again, take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. I need the notes as well as the, the answers to the closed passages, to the closed passage, and then you can leave. Again, I need the notes as well as the answers to the closed passage, and then you can leave. For those who are done, have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you on tomorrow. Again, I need Good your night, notes. Good night, and the answers to the closed passage. Mr. Petit, can you go to like the first closed passage? The first one? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Wait. Again, I need you to send your notes as well as your, as well as the, the answers to the first, to the um, closed passage, and then you can leave.
Good night. Good night. Again, I need to see your notes as well as the answers to the closed passage, and then you can go. Ojani and Akiro and Naveo Wallace, I need you to send me a note, please. Good night, Good night. All right, for the rest of you, I need you to take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Again, for the rest of you, I need you to, I need you to take a picture of your work and send it to me via WhatsApp. Good night. Good night. Good night. Can I miss the petition? Can I? Can I miss the petition? Can I? Can I, Naya? Naya, did you finish it? Or oh, you you saw have Monaco? I saw Monaco. Okay. Good night, Mr. Petit. Good night. 